This may have been one of the least bullish notes I've written on uh, Amazon in about 12 years. This is the same six, this is a sixth annual consumer survey we've done. Now, it's just in the U.S., so there's obviously limits there. There's a lot of Amazon that's outside the U.S. We did see continued record high kind of penetration of um, a number of U.S. consumers, about 90 percent of them. Well, they'll pick Amazon over any other online retail site when it, terms, uh, when it comes to where they want to shop. That's very consistent with three of the last four years. Where there was a little bit of some, uh, negative surprise was satisfaction scores amongst Amazon customers. They're still intrinsically very high, but they seem to have been slipping. And our guess is that the increased use of third-party sellers on the platform with maybe suboptimal quality controls, that may be causing a little bit of a ripple there. That's something that Amazon may need to fix. And then the other point that uh, was a surprise to us, a negative surprise, was that Prime seems to have plateaued. Now, that's in contrast with what the company said in its shareholder letter. I acknowledge that. We acknowledge that. But that's what our survey showed. Now, they are we think they already have 70 to 75 million Prime subs in the U.S., so they just may be hitting a point where they've got most of the people they're going to get on with Prime. But if they want to get more, they probably need to build out the offering even more, better shipping, faster shipping, more music, more video, et cetera. Those are kind of the, some of the wrinkles we saw. Overall, though, we continue to like uh, Amazon. It's not one of our top three picks, but we continue to like the story. Mark, uh, the things you said that Amazon might have to do to kind of get Prime moving again all sound like cost to me out of Amazon. Now, Amazon yeah. doesn't have that issue of, oh, I have this tremendously high margin business and the next thing I do is going to be lower margin because they've always kind of run it uh, kind of close to break even. But uh, does that change the financial story for Amazon over, the over time? You know, it could, Mike, but uh, there's two advantages that Amazon shareholders and Amazon the company has today. There are these two really large businesses that are growing exceptionally well for them and are super high margins. One is a, uh, AWS, which is now well above 15 billion a year, you know, revenue run rate. And this other thing called AMS, uh, Amazon Marketing Services, which is probably about $7 billion a year revenue run rate with also high margins. So we're talking like 20, 30 percent operating margins versus the core retail business at 2 to 5 percent. What it does is it just allows and gives Amazon a lot more air, a, a much bigger, much bigger room in which to invest aggressively. And my guess is we're going to see this new investment cycle by Amazon in terms of shipping, not only behind uh, the Prime program, but behind the, wall, uh, the, uh, the Whole Foods integration, sorry. And also the third thing, the building out of building out of shipping with Amazon uh, over the next couple of years. So I'm watching for that investment cycle, but the advantage that Amazon shareholders have today is that these other revenue streams, high margin, can help subsidize that in a way they couldn't have done it in the past. Mark, we saw shares of Etsy uh, surge this morning because they're raising their transaction fees on uh, some of their um, customers, uh, some of their vendors, yeah. tied largely to shipping fees. Is that something we could see happen at Amazon as well? Possibly. So, uh, Morgan, that was, a, that was a pretty sizable move by, uh, by Etsy in terms of changing its, uh, its fee structure to sellers. They're justifying that by saying that they're going to take the proceeds and further build out tools for sellers and put a lot of marketing dollars behind the platform. Momentum there seems to have really reversed over the last year or so. Does Amazon have that kind of uh, pricing power? Well, absolutely. Uh, if you look at what they did with, uh, with Prime, you know, they raised that by uh, 20 bucks. That's the consumers. And every year they seem to toggle up, slightly pick up the prices that they charge to sellers. But, you know, as you create the largest platform, they get these up. The, 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 the value, the power of the platform increases both consumers and for sellers, so it does give them pricing power. So I, would be, I wouldn't be surprised to see them do ongoing sh uh, increases like that, maybe not as big as what Etsy pulled off this morning, but I would expect that from Amazon. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.